Hi, my name is Rafael Lima, and in my talk today, I'm going to introduce how to use the ScriptForge library to write Python scripts in LibreOffice Calc. So the main idea in my talk is to show how we can combine the strength of LibreOffice Calc, the advantages of the Python language, and the new features added by the ScriptForge library. I'd like to point out that all examples are written using Python in this presentation. And if anyone wants to download all, any of the files that I show here, they are all available in my GitHub page. So what is ScriptForge? ScriptForge library is a set of services that are comprised of methods and properties that seek to make scripting easier and more accessible for LibreOffice users, mainly for those who are not experienced programmers and don't have much experience with the LibreOffice API. So you can see here that Calc is one of the services of the ScriptForge library. So this means that uh, the 21 services currently available in, in ScriptForge cover not only Calc, but also many other aspects of macro writing. I'd like to, uh, to highlight that uh, ScriptForge is available since LibreOffice 7.1, but only with basic support. And since LibreOffice 7.2, we have Python support. So this means that if you want to run any of the examples that I show here, you need at least LibreOffice 7.2. So why use ScriptForge? So the idea of ScriptForge is to hide API and UNO complexity, which is a challenge for those starting to write macros in LibreOffice. For example, I give here a simple example comparing the usual approach with the ScriptForge approach of doing things, okay? So the usual approach, uh, for example, if we want to, to test if a document is a calc document. So we would have to get document here and then test if it supports the service spreadsheet document. So if it does, it is a calc document. So uh, the idea of uh, ScriptForge is to hide this part because new users do not understand that we have to test this and they don't understand why this is necessary. So it's simpler to do this. So we can get the document using the create script service calc so create script service is a method from the, the ScriptForge library. And when we instantiate it uh, this way, it uh, references the currently open document, okay? The, the document that's called the macro. And then with the document, we can call is calc. And uh, if it's true, then we have a calc document. So it's a much simpler way to do things. Okay, so this is the main philosophy behind ScriptForge. The idea is to make scripting simpler. Okay, uh, now about the ScriptForge calc service. The calc service uh, has 30 methods and 11 properties. And it's an extension of the document service, which is another uh, service in the ScriptForge library that provides methods that are general for all types of LibreOffice documents. So today I'm going to focus on the methods that, I, that are specific to Calc. I would like to point out that uh, the documentation in the help, in LibreOffice help, uh, we have finished uh, the documentation of all services with examples for all methods. So if anyone is interested, is interested in learning more about the ScriptForge library, uh, you can access the, the, the LibreOffice help and there you can uh, find examples for all services and all methods. Well, so now let's start with the examples and we're going to, we're going to start with a very simple example that creates a matrix with strings that can be either the word even or the word odd. Okay, so, so these are the strings that are going to be inserted in a matrix, in a, in a matrix of cells in the current uh, sheet. Okay, so the idea here is very simple. I'm not going to 
uh, dive into the Python uh, aspect of this script, but I'm going to focus on the ScriptForge library aspects. Okay, so here we have the create script service uh, method that comes from the ScriptForge library. And when we instantiate it, it uh, using this uh, method, it always refers to the currently open document, which is the document that triggered this, uh, this macro, okay? So doc is a reference to the, currently, the, to the current document. And then we use the method offset. So this method is from the calc service. Uh, what it does, it, uh, starting from uh, an address, what we do is offset it by an amount of rows and columns. So suppose we have cell A1 here, so we can offset it by a certain amount of rows and columns. And with this, we can, uh, we can traverse a range. So I used here uh, a four by four matrix, okay? And then we use the doc.setValue method to write some string into the target cell. So notice here that when we call doc.offset, it returns a string containing the new address offset according to the arguments here. Okay, and then we use this target cell to write into this cell some value. So here, uh, just to show how everything is working, uh, I created all the examples that I'm going to show here have been implemented in a file. So you can download this in my GitHub page as well. Okay, so this execute v1, it creates a six by six matrix using the set value uh, methods as I have just presented, okay? So you can see here that it's not very fast, okay? So I'm going to address this in a minute. Uh, but before that, let's go back here to the presentation. And I'm going to show you uh, another feature of the ScriptForge library, which is the basic service. So here you see that uh, in addition to the calc service, I instantiate the basic service, okay, here. And then I use the input box method. So the basic service, the idea of the service is to provide some methods that are only available in basic, but also to Python scripts. Okay, so the input box uh, function is a function of the basic language that is called from within a Python macro using the basic service. Okay, so we can, uh, so I'm using this just to showcase that we can uh, ask some values to the user and then use this as parameters to create a matrix with the size, with any size that we want. So going back to the file. So here I'm going to execute this version that calls the input box. So here we can um, determine how many rows we want, let's say 15 and um, eight columns and then okay. And you see that it fills the values uh, as we want, okay? So as many values as we specified. However, you may have noticed that it is slow because of the set value, because when we use the set value and the offset, so we are calling the set value method many times. So it takes some time to run uh, all these calls. So a faster approach. So it's always faster to use set array. Okay, so now I'm going to show you an example of how the setArray method can be used, and it's very simple, okay? So the idea of the setArray method is to, so it's here, so we specify a starting address, and then we pass a matrix, which in Python can be a list of lists. So here I create a list of lists containing the odd and uh, even strings randomly. And what it does, the set array, it uh, inserts the values all at once. 
So we create it separately, we create this matrix separately, and then all at once we insert these values into the sheet. So this is why this method is much faster. So just to showcase how faster it is, let's go back to the file. And here we have this uh, V2. It runs uh, the six by six matrix using set array, which is faster. So see here. So here we have the slow version and here we have the faster version, okay? So whenever you can use the set array method instead of set value. Okay, so uh, here we have a fourth version where we can uh, specify how many rows, let's say 16 and then eight. So this one uses set, set array, so it's faster. So you see, it's almost instantaneous. Okay, so now moving on. So in this example, I show how to use other methods of the calc service. For example, we have the property current selection that uh, returns a string containing the address of the current selection. And what I do here is a simple example that uh, gets the current selection. Uh, so I search for values that are smaller than zero, and then I write into the, these cells containing these values uh, the word invalid here. And I also use the set cell style method from the script forge library to apply this style to the cell. So this is another method that we can use. Okay, so here what I do is I get the current selection, which is a string, and then I use it into the offset method to get the first cell in the current selection. So how do I, how do, I do this? I offset it by zero rows and zero columns, and then I resize, uh, when I offset, I can resize it, uh, to a range with one cell and with one row and one column. So this is what I do here. So with this, I get the first cell and then I can use the height of the current selection to get the number of rows and the width uh, of the current selection to get the number of columns. And with this information, what I can do is uh, for each uh, i and j, which are determined by the, the height and width of the current selection, what I do is get the first cell, offset it by i and j, and then I get the value of the cell here and test. If it is uh, smaller than zero, then I set uh, the value of the cell to invalid and apply the cell style. So let's see this happening in the file. Uh, so here we have the file. I'm going to create some values here. And as you can see, some of them are smaller than zero. So uh, in my selection, I apply that macro. So you see that uh, it only analyzes the selected cells. Okay. So this is another example to show some methods that we can use in the calc service. Okay. So moving on. Uh, now let's talk about clearing cell contents. So this is something that is challenging using the LibreOffice API because when you use the clear contents method, you have to specify the type of content that needs to be cleared. And this requires some knowledge of the LibreOffice API, which again is difficult, is challenging for new users. Okay. So the idea here is to provide three methods, the clear all method, here it uh, clears everything, okay, formats, values, everything. Then we have clear formats that clears only formats and clear values which clear only the values in the cells. Uh, so here uh, we have this, the code that I created for this example, which is very simple. So first I get access to the current document and then I clear all and then I pass a, an address to be cleared, okay? So let's go back to the file to see how this works. Well, uh, so here I, we have clear all. So uh, it's clearing all and I am passing this range as an argument. So clear all clears everything, including formats and values. Clear formats uh, remove the formatting and um, keeps the values and then clear values remove the values and keep the formats, okay? As we would expect. Uh, we can use Ctrl Z to undo 
all these comments, okay? Uh, now moving on. Uh, so now we're going to talk about uh, copy and moving ranges. Okay, so we have uh, three methods for doing that. So we have copy to cell, copy to range, okay, which is a bit different. I'm going to explain this in a minute. And move range, okay. So copy to cell is uh, we, we get a source and then we specify a destination, okay. Uh, in copy to range, is all, it also asks for a source and a destination, but it works differently. Uh, copy to range is the same when you copy a source and paste it into a larger destination than the source. Okay, and then move range uh, is uh, is the same as copy to cell, but then we move instead of cop copy. Okay, so uh, the first example that we're going to run is this. So we have here the copy to cell. So we have a source and a destination. So the destination can be just a single cell because this works as a control C, control V operation. Okay. Uh, if you specify a range here uh, in the second argument, only the top left cell will be considered. Okay. And copy to range, notice that it takes in a source argument and the destination is a range as well. So we have a range that can be larger and it works as though we, as we were uh, pressing Ctrl V after selecting the destination range. Okay, I, I will show this in a minute. Uh, so let's go on, let's go back to the file. So here we have the source. And then we have copy to cell. So I'm going to copy A1 to A4 into say one, C1 here. So you see that it does uh, exactly as we expect. As we expect. Uh, and then copy to range. We're copying A1 to A4 into A1 uh, to F6. Okay. So you see that it, it expands the source as though as we were doing this. We copy it here, control C, then we select the, de the destination and press control V. So this is copy to range. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let's go back to the slides here. We're going to do a more uh, complex example using copy to cell. So here in this example, we're going to copy uh, values from a separate file, from a different file. So suppose we have another file, which in this example, I'm calling datasource.ods. So this is a separate file. And from this file, uh, I'm using the UI service from ScriptForge. So the UI service to access this document that must be open in this example. Okay. So suppose this datasource.ods is open. So I am using the get document method from the UI service to get this document, which I'm calling here as source doc. And then I can use from this source doc, I can use the range property to get an object containing information about this address from this source document. Okay, so now we have this source range and we can use this source range with the copy to cell method. So see here that we are using this source range from the data source.ods file as the source and we are pasting the contents into cell A1. Okay. So now let's see how this works. Well, here we have the data source. So this is the range that we are copying into the current file. So this is data source.ods. This is the range that we're copying. And here we are copying those contents. Okay. So if I press here, it will copy the contents from the other file into this file. So uh, be aware that the uh, data source.ods file must be open. Okay. It is also possible to do this with the file closed 
uh, and I'll show that uh, when we uh, talk about uh, managing sheets, okay? So there is a method to copy from a file that is closed, but we will talk that later. Uh, nice. Now moving on. Well, now we're going to talk about managing sheets. So we have many methods for managing sheets. Uh, the most, uh, the, the, the ones that we are going to use the most are activate, copy sheet, insert sheet, move sheet, remove sheet, and rename sheet. So I'm going to show you a few examples of how these methods can be called. Okay, so they are very simple um, and they're meant to be like that. So you see here that, for example, if, if we, we want to create a new sheet, we just call the insert sheet method. So first here, we again, we instantiate uh, the calc service to access the current, uh, the current document. And then we call the insert sheet method. So it will insert a new sheet called test sheet. And it will be created before the second uh, sheet that uh, already exists in the document. So this is an optional argument that uh, defines where this new sheet will be placed. We could have used uh, a string here referencing a, an existing sheet and then the new sheet would be placed before the, the, the existing sheet that we passed here, okay? And then we can activate this sheet. So activate is like clicking the sheet name to show the sheet, okay? So this is what we're going to do now in the file. So now coming back to the file here, we can insert sheet so you see that it will create the test sheet right here okay so uh, so after we uh, clicked the button you see that it created the test sheet here let's insert a few values here just to uh, use them for the next example and here we're now going to copy test sheet and uh, uh, when we create this copy, the copy will be named copy test sheet. Okay, so the code is here. So it's very simple. It's just copy sheet, uh, the source sheet, and then the name of the copy. So note, note that it will be placed last in the file because I did not specify the before sheet argument as I had done here. Okay, so uh, now copy sheet and you see that a copy was made here. And finally, the remove sheet. I'm going to remove the copy test sheet. You see that now it's gone. And here, okay, so this uh, is the example. This is the method copy sheet from file that copies a sheet from a file that can be closed or open. It doesn't matter if it's closed or not, okay? Uh, so let's see how this works. Copy sheet from file. So uh, you see that it's very simple to call this. It has uh, three arguments. So the first argument is the file from which a sheet will be copied, an entire sheet, okay? Here is the name of the sheet that will be copied. And this is the name of the sheet when it's pasted in the current document. Okay, so again, it's copying sheet 2 from datasource.ods. So we can see here that sheet 2 has these contents. Okay, and we are going to place them at the end of this file. So when I uh, click here, it copies the sheet into this file. But beware that uh, using a copy sheet from file, you don't need... Where is it? Ah, it's here. <laughs> so when you use copy sheet from file, uh, the file doesn't need to be open. Okay, so this is the advantage of this method, but it copies the entire sheet. Okay. Uh, it is also possible to copy a range from a file that is closed. Okay, but uh, for that, you would need to use the UI service, open the file, copy, and then close it, okay? Uh, now, let's go back to the slides here. We are now going to 
discuss these uh, D methods, okay, that are used to quickly call uh, calc functions that are very common, which are average, count, max, mean, and sum. So the name of the methods are DAVG, DCount, DMAX, DMEAN, and DSUM. So it's very simple. And here I also created an instance of the basic service to be able to call a message box from within a Python script. So see here that first I instantiate the document and then I call DAVG to calculate the average of the values in cells A1 through a, uh, E1. Okay, so this is the range uh, from which I'm going to calculate the average and then I'm going to present the result in a message box. So this is the code that does exactly that. Okay, so now let's go back to the file and here we have values in the range A1 to E1 and when I calculate average it applies the DAVG method and uh, presents a message box with the results. Remember that this is all being done in Python, okay? Now let's go back to the slides to see uh, the last uh, topic of our talk. So I'm going to explain how to import CSV files using the import from CSV file method from the calc service. So it's very simple. You can see here that I just have to specify the file to be imported, which in this example is job data v1.csv. So this is the first argument of the import from CSV file. And then I have to specify the cell into which the values will be inserted. So they will be inserted starting at cell A1. Notice here that I am not specifying any additional settings for the CSV import. So it's using the default settings, which are uh, the, the file is a text file encoded in UTF-8. The field separator can be a comma, a semicolon, or a tab character. The string delimiter is a double quote. All lines are imported and quoted strings are formatted as text. So these are the uh, default settings. So let's see this happening. Well, here uh, we have the file that's going to be imported. Notice that this is a very standard CSV file with a comma as a field delimiter. And here notice that I have numbers that uh, use the dot as the decimal separator. So we're going to import this file now. So here we can see the let me just erase this so if i click here it will load that file correctly so everything is here now i'm going to show you uh, some specifics of this import from csv file method so here i have a second csv file and notice here that it has a semicolon as the field separator and a comma as uh, the decimal separator. And why is that? Because, because I'm from Brazil and in Brazil we use commas as the decimal separator. So uh, if we import this file using the, the, the default settings, it will break the import because it will think that this comma is a field separator. Okay, so we have to apply some settings before importing it. And what are these settings? So uh, the settings are defined as a string uh, separated with commas too. So we have this filter option here that, it, that can be entered here as the last argument from the import CSV file. And here we specify the ASCII code of the field separator, which in this case, I'm going to use only the semicolon. So notice here that I'm not uh, telling that the comma is a field separator here. Then I have here some standard values, for example, uh, the double quotes as the text delimiter, the character set, and the number of the first line. So I am, I am important from the first line until the end of the document. So all records are being ported. So using these filter options, let's see what happens. Well, first, let's see what happens if I don't use the if I use the default settings, for example, if I load that CSV2 file with the default settings, you can see here 
that it separates those values that I wanted to stay together. Uh, but if I import that CSV file with the custom settings, you can see here that they are imported correctly as I would expect. So, okay, uh, with this, I finished my talk. I'd like to thank you for your attention and thank uh, in a big thanks to uh, the members of the Script Force team, Jean-Pierre Ledour and Alan Homedem. Uh, so thank everyone for your attention and if anyone has any questions, please let me know.